Hey friend, welcome. It's Michaela, but you can call me Mac. Today we are updating this reading journal with all the books we read in March. Let's just jump right into it. So March was actually a pretty good month for me. I was able to finish seven books. I started off the month with The Office BFFs, Tales of the Office from Two Best Friends Who Were There, A Court of Thorns and Roses, Black Girls Must Be Magic, The Light We Lost, which honestly was a little bit of an experience because <laughs> my mom and I did this read a book backward challenge and this lucky book was the one that we decided to read backwards so it was it was different <laughs> i also read foul lady fortune that time i got drunk and saved a demon and lastly i finished out the month with the book tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow Next, I am updating the alphabet reading challenge. We were only able to color in two letters this month, F for Foul Lady Fortune and T for That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. So this alphabet page is looking real bare. Like, <laughs> I get that we're literally only like three months into the year, but I'm not paying attention to this page at all, if I'm being honest. I have not been trying to find books that match this challenge. I've literally just been reading whatever I want. That's on my TBR. And for this next, month I really want to buckle down and try to find these books and knock off maybe some of these harder letters like Q and XYZ I don't know we'll see we're gonna try to knock these off but I need to focus on this more I was not able to finish any graphic novels in March but I did start reading a book that started with the letter E and hopefully I'll be able to finish it this month so we can color this in for my quotes page, I paid a bit better attention this time around and was able to add these two quotes here. Both are from the book That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. This book is so good. It's so cute. It's so funny. I absolutely loved it. To give you a bit more background on the book just so these quotes make a little bit more sense this book follows the main character cinnamon one night she gets drunk she's going home and she accidentally saves a demon named fallon and when she realizes that he can talk like actual spoken rational words she's just like oh my gosh like you can speak and then he says i tend to save my mindless screaming for tuesdays <laughs> So that quote, I just thought was funny and I added it to the book here. And then the second quote that I have here, this is so cute because it just shows Fallon's love and devotion for Cinnamon. Again, one night Cinnamon gets drunk <laughs> and she kind of embarrasses herself in front of everyone. And the next morning when she wakes up, she's like, what happened? And Fallon's like, yeah, this is what happened. You kind of did this. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Kill me now. Like, just, I don't want to face anybody. And he says, my love, I'd sooner kill everyone on this ship to save you the embarrassment. And I just thought this quote was so cute because I really feel like this captures Fallon's love for Cinnamon, but also like Cinnamon's personality because she's just really funny. And I just love them. I'll stop there because I could talk about this book forever. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I started three series last month that I'm adding to my tracker here. I'm adding A Court of Thorns and Roses, and if I'm being honest, I don't even really know if I want to continue with this series, but I added it. I'm also adding Secret Shanghai. Foul Lady Fortune is book three in this series, which I didn't know about, but I'll explain that a little bit more because that wasn't my fault. <laughs> And then the last series I'm adding here is Mead Mishaps, which that time I got drunk and saved a demon is a part of, and I cannot wait to dive into those other books. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm just now realizing I did read the second book and Black Girls Must Be Exhausted, so I do need to update that right now. <laughs> And the last tracker I need to update is my 2022 Goodreads Choice Award winners page. I read The Office BFFs and I really liked this one. I gave it five stars. And then I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and I did not like this one. I gave this 2.8 stars. I was so excited because I heard such good things about this book and I just <laughs> was so disappointing. I didn't like it. So let's get into these books, starting with Foul Lady Fortune. I will be sure to put all the Goodreads links to all of these books that I talk about today down in the description box. So you can go click on those, read more about them, check them out if you're interested. But just a little short synopsis for Foul Lady Fortune. It says, this is the first book in a captivating new duology following an ill-matched pair of spies posing as a married couple to investigate a series of brutal murders in 1930s Shanghai. 
When I first started this book, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. There was a lot of historical background information to keep up with, as well as characters and not only their names, but their code names and their aliases and then whose side everyone was on. It was a lot. And to this day, I'm still kind of confused about a twin triplet cousin situation. I have no idea. But then I learned that although Foul Lady Fortune is the first book in the duology, it's actually the third book in this like secret shanghai series and although you can read it like a standalone um i would recommend reading the first two books these violent delights and our violent ends before that because there's characters and events that are referenced in this book that happened in the first two books and there's some you know some spoilers in there so if i knew that i 100 percent would have read those two books first but it's fine i plan to read them anyway if you like Spy Family, Six of Crows, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, or The Legend of Korra, I think you would like this book. First of all, the setting in this book reminds me of The Legend of Korra. I always just kept picturing like Republic City whenever I was thinking about, you know, them going to work or driving down the street. Like I just had this entire vision of that because it is like a historical kind of like fantasy magical realism, I would say. It reminds me of Spy Family because it follows the story of Rosalind, who's an assassin, and Orion, who's a spy, and they're posing as this married couple for their next mission. Four years ago, Rosalind was brought back from the brink of death from this really strange experiment. And so now she never ages, she doesn't have to sleep, and she's basically immortal. As I mentioned, there are quite a few characters to keep up with. I think the story follows about six or seven main characters. And again, it's a spy book, so you have to keep up with their name, their aliases, their code name, and then which side people are on. There's triple agents, double, triple agents, double, double, triple agents, you know, there's all those kind of things. So you definitely have to pay attention a little bit. Um, but I love all things spy movies, spy books, heist things. So I was locked in. I was like, okay, let me reread this or let me go back because I need to understand this part a little bit better so I can remember who this person was, why they're in this story. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. Oh, yeah. So also, apparently this was a retelling of Shakespeare's play As You Like It, which I personally have never read or even heard about. But once I found that out and I read the little synopsis, I definitely see the similarities, specifically with the names, of course. But the story, I can see some little similarities there in the story as well. Overall, I gave this book four stars. I really liked Rosalind's character. I thought she was interesting. I thought Orion was funny and charming and the little twists and turns. And I honestly cannot wait for the next book. For the design of this page I wanted to include these little vials of liquid because they're kind of important to the story and Rosalind is an assassin and her go-to weapon of choice is poison that she actually makes herself. I also am very aware that I wrote foul lolly lolly fortune. I fix it later. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I listened to the audio version of the Office BFFs and I must say it was a delightful experience. <laughs> As a fan of the Office, I found it fascinating to learn more about the actors who brought these characters to life. I loved the little anecdotes that Angela and Jenna talked about, especially like for example, the their first red carpet experience. <laughs> they went shopping for their outfits at Target and Macy's and then they drove their own car to the event and they circled the block a couple of times because because parking was like $50 so they were trying to find affordable parking it was just so cute and sweet and it just shows how like where the show started versus how it grew unexpectedly and like where it took them now you know to their careers now I just thought that was really cute I've always felt like everyone on the show seemed so humble and nice and I think Angela and Jenna kind of reaffirm that with this book. The audio version offers more additional features that make the experience a little bit more enjoyable, like guest appearances from cast members and original musical numbers performed by the cast members. These little added features truly enhanced the overall experience and made it a must listen for anyone who loves the show for sure. I would 100% recommend this audiobook. It was just so great learning more about the actors who made this show so great and I definitely had a smile on my face most of this book. <laughs>
Black Girls Must Be Magic is the second book to Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. And I really enjoyed reading more about Tabby's story. It's just a continuation of her story. There were definitely things in this book that I was just like, oh, girl, again, I was like, come on. Ugh. But, <laughs> but I was okay with it because again, it just felt like you're reading a real story about real life events. It was just a nice random slice of life book to kind of break up like my romance fantasy kick I've been on lately. <laughs> I think I like the first book better but I am still looking forward to finishing the last book in this series and I really appreciate again how the author touches on topics like fertility, single motherhood by choice, supporting women in the workplace, friends, family, relationships, like all of those things. I gave this book a three and a half stars. <sighs> tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow <laughs> okay this book i'm definitely in the minority here but i was really disappointed with this book the short description says in this exhilarating novel two friends sam and sadie often in love but never lovers come together as creative partners in the world of video game design where success brings them fame joy tragedy duplicity and ultimately a kind of immortality I will again be sure to link all of the books down in the description box so you can read the longer descriptions but so many people spoke so highly of this i was so excited to read it i really wanted to like it but i just could not i could not like this book <laughs> the pacing was so slow I found myself losing interest in the characters and their journey. The writing style was also kind of dry, which made it difficult to fully connect with the story. The characters themselves, I thought, lacked depth, and I found myself not caring about them whatsoever. The only person I liked was Marx. He was actually interesting and a really good friend. I think this book was supposed to be about friendship, but the relationship between Sadie and Sam was odd and they spent majority of their lives arguing or not speaking to one another. Like I would never want to be friends with either of these people. <laughs> the only, and I cannot stress this enough, the only reason I kept reading was because the video games they designed sound really, really cool. And again, we're probably Probably the only interesting thing in this book other than Mark's. I would 100% play all of the games they developed and I really wish they were actually real games. <laughs> Especially their first game Ichigo. It reminded me a little bit of Little Nightmares, just less creepy. <laughs> Overall, I gave this book a very, very low three stars on Goodreads. However, it's low-key more like a 2.8-ish stars because I'm giving one star for Mark's and 1.8 stars for all the games they designed. I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't understand why this book was so popular and how it even won best fiction for 2022. I just, I, I don't get it, but I guess it's not for me. It, it just wasn't for me. <laughs> So for the light we lost, okay, so as I mentioned earlier, my mom and I did a challenge to read a book backwards, and as crazy as that sounds, the experience was actually kind of fun. I have an entire video to show how it went, and I show you how I set up this page. I will link it up above and down below. Go check it out, and think about reading a book backwards, because it was actually pretty fun. For the last two books of March, I wanted these pages to be side by side because these stories are fairly similar, but one is significantly better than the other. On the left hand side here, I have A Court of Thorns and Roses, and on the right hand side, I have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. Both of these stories follow a female protagonist who embark on this grand adventure and journey to help save their respective love interests, who happen to be these gorgeous men who can shapeshift into a creature. <laughs> Because A Court of Thorns and Roses was so popular on all the socials, I was so excited to read this book, but I just did not like it as much as I wanted to. I tried to like this book. Feyre, who was the main character, she was all right. She was a bit boring. And so was Tamlin. They, I mean, their personalities, they just didn't seem to have much of a personality. I also didn't understand their like romantic dynamic. It was a bit awkward and uncomfortable at times. I also did not get that this was a Beauty and the Beast retelling until like maybe halfway into the book. There was this blight where everyone in his kingdom had to wear these masquerade masks all the time. They could never take them off. And I mean, come on, first of all, let's look at this gorgeous, by the way, fanfic art of Feyre and Tamlin. I mean, 
this is supposed to, this flimsy mask is supposed to, I don't know, hide the fact that this man looks fine. I mean, he looks fine. Like, I don't understand. I don't know. I just was like, okay, whatever. If it was supposed to make it hard for her to fall in love with him or whatever, I mean, it's doing literally nothing. <laughs> On the other hand, that time I got drunk and saved a demon. I love this book. I could talk about this book for hours. It was so good. It was so cute. It was so funny. It follows Cinnamon, who is, <laughs> get this, she's a spice farmer and she lives on a cinnamon farm. <laughs> and Cinnamon, by contrast, is just such a funny person. She actually has a personality. She's hilarious. And Fallon, who is the demon dragon that she accidentally saved, is also pretty funny and has a personality. Their chemistry is just so cute and funny and sweet, and I just really like them together. In contrast, this book is about 180 pages compared to A Court of Thorns and Roses 440 some pages. Like, this book told a better story, more concise, basically almost the same story, but again, just so much better, so much more flavor and spice, no pun intended because cinnamon is a spice seller. <laughs> But no joke, this book is very spicy and steamy. Who knew I needed demon dragon smut romance fantasy in my life? I did not know that, but apparently I did. You might have heard how steamy the Court of Thorns and Roses series is. The first book is not really, I don't know. I haven't read the others, but this one is not that steamy. Back to the similarities and the differences in this book. They're both the youngest daughters out of three siblings. Feyre has two older sisters and a dad, and her family doesn't really treat her the best. She's a provider for them, she hunts for them, she gets money for them and takes care of them and they don't really appreciate it that much. On the other hand, Cinnamon has two older brothers appropriately named Cumin and Chili. <laughs> They live on their parents' spice farm. Both of these stories actually start with Feyre and Cinnamon being taken from their home by Tamlin and Fallon. And the way that these scenes play out are just drastically different. Tamlin basically takes Feyre by force and it tells her family, don't follow us, I'm taking her. And her family kind of doesn't really do much about it. <laughs> There's nothing they really do about it. On the other hand, Fallon tries to bust into <laughs> Cinnamon's house and take her and her brothers and her dad start trying to fight him off and then Fallon smells coffee and bacon basically for the first time and is like what's that and then her mom is like oh we're having breakfast come on come grab a plate come sit down have some coffee <laughs> and they proceed to have breakfast with a demon <laughs> And just the contrast of these scenes, this one is just so much more lighthearted and fun and sweet and funny and I just love this book. Fallon is also devoted, devoted, absolutely devoted to Cinnamon. Like she is his life, his literal everything. Tamlin says that that's the case. But, and I'm not gonna spoil the book, but there are things that Feyre does for this man and for him to kind of just sit there. I get obviously circumstances and situations are happening, but Fallon would never. That's all I have to say. Fallon would absolutely never allow what happened to Feyre to happen to Cinnamon. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Anyway, I could talk on and on and on about this book, but getting to the page design, I just kept it simple with the two stickers at the top. And then I also printed out these stickers, um, one of the wolf that's on the cover page of A Court of Thorns and Roses and one of a dragon, but it was a little dark. And I just, it wasn't reading right to me. And then I got this overwhelming sense of inspiration to try to find a dragon and a wolf. I did some searching and I found this picture. I'll put the link down in the description. And I found this like dragon and wolf kind of in this circle, kind of tangled up in each other. And I just absolutely loved it. And I had to do it. I used black for the dragon because Fallon is, I believe he's the dragon of smoke or shadows and then Tamlin I believe his wolf beast thing is like blonde I guess kind of like a blondish gold color I guess kind of like his hair I assume at least that's how I pictured it I don't know I like how this graphic came out <laughs> I gave A Court of Thorns and Roses three stars and I gave That Time I Got Drunk and Saved the Demon five stars. I love this book and I cannot wait to read the others in the series. 
Here's a final flip through for all of the pages for all of the books in March. Oh my god, I just realized. Ah! This is. <laughs> oh my god, that doesn't even say lady. This is wow. Oh, lolly. Oh my god, Michaela. Okay, hold on, let me fix this. Thanks so much for watching friend i always appreciate you being here check out the video right here on the left hand side of the screen to see all of the books we read in february and check out this video right here on the right hand side of the screen to see how we did this whole read a book backwards challenge i will see you in the next one bye